still advocating that we move against uh, Ireland here. Now, of course, on the flip side of that, we do have Britain that is quite clearly looking to consolidate its power here and bring all of Britain sort of under its under the sort of the United Kingdom, as it were. And it does have a huge, powerful fleet that has already seen off a massive French fleet. And they are effectively keeping the North Sea, or this, this part of the North Sea here, along the sort of European coastline here, and the English Channel, under control of the British. Now, that's what we want. We want trade to be flowing freely and clearly here. Economics as well. I wonder if we trade that for national debt, I wonder. Ah, indeed, sir. But wait a minute, Kingdom of Spain has got an open trade port. You jest with me, sir, surely. Who are they at war with? Let's quickly keep an eye on what the war is going on here. It's very important that we keep an eye on what's going on in the on the continent. Look at they're at war with, my goodness me. Again, I do apologize for it being a Oh my goodness me! The, what? Greetings and welcome to episode 3 of my Napoleon Total War Darth Mod Kingdom of Norway campaign and this my friends have we left it last time and dare we say we are having a renaissance here in Norway since we have taken command, taken control or should we say looked after Norway in the way that really has helped it really prosper. We are I would say the if not one of the strongest trading nations in all of Europe and beyond. If you see here, look at our income here coming in through here. 17,145. I don't believe there's a single nation anywhere close to that amount of trade coming in. We have stretched our trade tentacles, as it were, all the way into the Atlantic here. We have three of these trade posts here of under ours. We've got cotton here. We have tobacco and indeed furs. Then we've moved down here in, in for the past the Atlantic, as you can see here, moving deep into the Atlantic sort of ocean, you're just outside sort of Portuguese Spanish control here, off the coast of Portugal, off the coast of Spain, which of course Spain did take Gibraltar from the British. As you can see, we've got ivory here now. Ivory really is bringing in the money. Look at that, 64 gold here per per eye per piece of ivory. That is mind-boggling. It really, really is here. So you can see they got the um, our fleet down here as well. Oh, actually, that is Denmark here. What am I on about? Man, for goodness sake, I'm getting a little bit carried away here. Here is ivory. I do beg your pardon, my friends, I'm getting mixed up here. So, but still, we still have ivory off the coast of Spain here in the Mediterranean. And look at that, 2,364 from two merchantmen ships here. And that leads me on to this as well. A number of the council members have been saying that we shouldn't really be producing, building merchantmen ship only. We should also just stick to the Indian ship as well for the for financial reasons as well. Because the merchantmen, of course, are well, three times more expensive to produce for ourselves. Now, although they are able to defend themselves quite significantly, 
we are trying to put together a, a specific combat fleet, a very powerful combat fleet, based upon uh, the suggestions and proposals of the council, which we are going to do. I'd also like to thank Lord Dim as well um, for some wonderful naming conventions, which once we've got our main combat fleet up, I will be putting those in. They are actually some really wonderful sort of Norwegian um, no, some Norwegian sort of past kings and sort of mythological uh, mythological sort of um, names as well. So really, is absolutely fantastic. I really want to put those in. So to thank Lord Dim for those. I'd like to thank all of you for your wonderful contribution from last time as well. It's absolutely fantastic to see. It really is. As you can see here as well, we've got this sloop here, <clears throat> and we're moving towards this post here for T or Calcutta. I th what is T at the moment? Let's have a quick look here. T is thirty nine. Now that's quite. That is very high indeed. So I think what we will do is we'll either go for Casablanca here or we will go for Calcutta here for our next. See what we're using, we're using the sloops to sort of occupy the trade nodes before anybody else gets in, into there and then really expand our fleets in each one. Um, I don't think we've got any more ships en route yet. No, I don't believe so. But as you can see, look, all of this is our. Look at the look at the trade along these trade lines here. All this is ours. Most is, is no. Look at that. Ten thousand two hundred seventy-nine. We are quite clearly the most dominant trading nation in Europe, if not the entire world at the moment. It really is that that much. We've got Kingdom of Spain and Denmark, Norway have got four thousand each, and we've got Portugal, then the French, then Belgium, Ireland, Crimea, and down thus until the very bottom there. Um, so as you can see, we really are really rampant here, and a lot of the cows were saying it is vital that we keep stability above everything else. Nothing too rash, nothing too silly, because we really have built up quite an economy here, to the point where we're actually able to buy our technology. We're actually buying our technology, as you can see here, demonstrated here. We've bought all of these, you can see here, have all been bought with the money that we've gotten from trade. Now, normally, in an, in a sort of different circumstances, we would be struggling because we'd be way behind the technological curve, as it were. We'd be fighting our way, trying to find some place we could take over to get access to a research, um, you know, research a school or a, a university or a college to try and get our research up and running. We don't have to worry about that because we're able to buy the research from other nations and also indeed sell our research on and also sell it on tactically. We can actually become sort of dare I say non-complicit in certain wars. We're actually tipping the balance in certain wars. <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. Indeed, the Ottomans are, have been sort of earmarked, as it were, by the council to say, you know, maybe sell some of our sort of research to the Ottomans to help in their war against the Russia. That will keep Russia away from us. And maybe even sell some of our technology to Russia so that they, with their war with Sweden, maybe that will crush Sweden. Um, also, Denmark is still a main priority for ours, but there's a growing a growing percentage, a growing number of the council who are advocating that we strike against Scotland here. Now, Ireland does have strong allies in Spain and France. We cannot and we cannot and will not simply be able to cope with that amount of firepower against us. So we're going to probably leave it until either Britain, the United Kingdom itself deals with Ireland because they are at war with Ireland or the, is sort of the rebels in the Scottish and you know, the rebels attack and retake Edinburgh from the from the Irish and then the council said if that happens Scotland won't have any allies and we can simply move in if possible. Now we've got to be wary we don't also sort of stoke the ire of, of, of the United Kingdom as well. It's very, very important that we keep Britain on our side because their control of the North Sea here, or the English Channel, uh, and the North Sea here is vital for our trade. Look at that, we have a huge trade node here, trade path running here through, which is absolutely crucial we keep this opening here. If this is crippled by any, even if we, if we move against uh, Scotland and Britain take very sort of dim view of that declare war upon us to take Scotland back. We could be in a lot of trouble. We don't have the fleet. We don't have the resources yet to do that. But as you can see, Britain's in a lot of trouble. Bristol's been hit. Uh, Catham Docks has been hit here. The only thing they've got is Portsmouth open still here. Their trade is being hit very hard. Liverpool is still open here, but that's about it. So I can probably see them moving in for um, a Scotland here to try and get Glasgow up open and maybe even Waterford down here as well. But for the time being, we're going to stay as we are. We're also also we we've got to get a sloop into this um, into this crossing here in the Irish and the sort of the inner seas here to, to sort of stop the movement of troops or even to keep an eye on the movement of troops here. But we are, as you can see here, my friends, 
we're actually building a star, a small star fort. We're actually able to afford that. That was 7,000 gold. And we took it in our stride. We took it in our stride. We were able to afford that without any great hindrance to our, uh, our budgets or our income. We are waiting for mass mobilization to be to be rec uh, researched by another nation. We can great grab hold of that, get drill school, and finally get ourselves grenadiers and indeed Norwegian ski troops. I mean, look at that. What an absolute joy that is to see there. But these are, these are the gentlemen we want. These gentlemen here are the ones we want here. The morale is exceptionally high. The media's attack are wonderful here, but we want these gentlemen here. It's going to cost us a few coin, but they'll be worth it. And we've also got metal roads. We are, I think, one of the first nations, specifically in Scandinavia, to have metal roads. Only now are Sweden actually putting cobbled roads into Stockholm and in Sweden itself. That is how advanced we are at the moment because of the trade we have. And we must maintain that trade at all costs. It really is vital we do that. So as you can see here we do have two more turns and we get the 80 gun ship line. That's going to be our flagship. Flagship of our combat fleet. Now we're going to start putting some real heavy ships into here. Primarily 64 gunners and then we'll also mingle with some 74 guns into there as well. But we are going to put a full stack navy together, and I mean a proper full combat fleet, ready to fight anybody, anywhere, at any time. Uh, we're also, ideally we'd like to get another port, but we're restricted what we can do at the moment, but another port really would be a boon to us. Now, if a limited liability company was up, look at that, trading company would open up five trade routes, the income would just be staggering, it really would. Capacity gone up to two, and also it would give us access to some additional firepower here, particularly um, getting these extra echelons here. But look at that. Carronade frigates. Firepower 192. Let's compare that to the 80 guns, 414. So as you can see, the firepower of the, those are absolutely extraordinary. But I think that, my friends, is all we can do at the moment. We don't have any more trade with anybody else we can do. Kingdom of Belgium is friendly with us. The rest of the major nations are indifferent, which is concerning, because as you can see here, some of them are indifferent, and it's starting to creep up quite extensively here. Kingdom of Prussia. But some of them are actually on the, on the upturn here as well. We've got to be very careful what we're doing here. That's why we're also putting together a secondary force here. It's going to be a full stack. Let's have a look at what generals we've got available. Master Gunner. We don't have any artillery, so that he would not be any good to us. Little Sergeant. Minus five losses in the area of attrition. Slack Disciplinarian. Now why would we want that gentleman at all? Absolutely. Yep. This is probably the gentleman with a little sergeant. Minus five losses in an area of attrition. That would be excellent. We won't get him just yet, but we're just going to see here what we can actually do here. We want, we're probably going to put a, a general into this army as well. We're going to make ourselves absolutely as strong as we possibly can here. We don't have any more towns and villages being around the coastline and ready to be upgraded or possibly going to develop into towns and cities in the future, which is a little bit of a shame. But who knows? Something might pop up in the in the in the near future. Right, let's end the turn, my friends, and let's see what happens here. Moving down to reclaim this. <clears throat> Belgium Island, nothing from Ireland, nothing from oh, Britain will do. Will. Now, France has been moving troops to the border, and they've had, look at that fleet they've got there. That's, my, that's the problem we've got here. If we go up against France, look what we would be facing. The French really do have a huge amount of firepower at their disposal. Nothing silly, sir. Austria. Britain. Now they haven't moved against Ireland, which is is troubling. We hope that Ireland doesn't move against Britain. Otherwise, we're going to have a, an island that's going to be taking over Britain here. And that's going to put Spain and France in a very good position because one of their major pa enemies will be removed from battle. So we'd hope that the Irish uh, movement doesn't move any further down here for now. Why are you here? And why are you raiding this here, sir? Now we're just going to claim this for ourselves. What sugar? 
Sugar. Wait a minute. Sugar. Wait. Sugar's 48. Oh, I don't think we will. I don't want to take any. It's Portugal. They've, they've nabbed that sugar there. <clears throat> I believe there's probably a supply going on to there as well. But we'll stick with tea at the moment. As you can see, ivory really is bringing, especially the French. The French want lots of ivory. They're taking cotton. And actually, the long term trading here is 156. That's going to grow quite substantially. Look how much trade we've got with the French. Straight to away, our f uh, the French really have become our major trading partner. Most of it coming in through here, through Nantes. Well, that's cotton there as well. I wonder what Britain are going to do to respond here. We're going to leave Ireland alone for the moment. But I think we will actually send this ship here. We can't really recruit <coughs> any others. Two turns here. I think we'll put that into just ready for the merchant ship. We need to take this trade node down here, which we've occupied. We need to get these ships in. Then we're going to focus as well. The council did say we need to focus upon these trade nodes here and fill them up to capacity. Um, get them f up to full capacity. We could have uh, maybe five to six thousand gold coming in from each trade node, especially here from cotton. We've only got two ships, three ships on here. We're bringing in. 2160 just from there. Absolutely wonderful. Now, let's continue. We've got 27,000 gold here. 8557. Look at that. That's absolutely just boomed here. Now, I think with that in mind, let's continue our recruitment here. Now, what do we have? I think we need we need cavalry because if we go up against if we go up against any nation that has artillery, we're going to need cavalry to counteract that artillery. As you can see, we've got a good complement of cavalry here. So let's. And now we've got the echelon here as well. So we'll have. Oh, yeah, nice so I'll give us four there. And then I think we'll also have. Actually, let's get full complement of gentlemen. A full complement here. Now, is any more we can. Any more we can buy off any of the major nations? Now, as the council also said, France aren't going to give us any, any tr technology. It's going to cost us about five or six thousand gold to get that technology off them. Now that'll pay that, that that if we to pay five thousand, that would pay probably pay dividends in the long run because it's reducing the upkeep costs of our. So that's that. This technology we would get off them, even though it costs us a lot up front, in the long term it's going to pay for itself because it's reducing the upkeep costs of our army. So that's a long term sort of gain for a short term expense for a sort of a short term expense. So which we'll just try again. We won't give them fire in advance because that's our advantage. As you can see, we're rich here. Moment, their wealth is just off the chart, so they don't need our money. But we'll just try and tempt them here with. Let's offer them four thousand. It's a, it's a lot. Let's see if they go with that. Yes, indeed, sir. Now the council was absolutely spot on. It's, you, you or many of you said it's going to cost you at least between four and six thousand gold to get something off the French, and you were absolutely spot on once again, my friends. And that is why your advice, your proposals are so vital to it. Not only this campaign, but the survival of the campaign. So now we have the reduction again. Here we've managed to reduce the upkeep here costs of our army units. We're, so we're reducing. They're trying to get keep as much money as we can for as little expenditure as possible. As you can see here. That's going to give us good replenishment as well here, I believe. Minus there, so we've got actually we've got minus ten percent now upkeep for all army units here from national debt and from conscripts in army con uh, core organisation. We've actually got that. Now if we're going to get conscripts, uh, now someone's got we've got conscripts. Diamond formation. Now we've got fire in advance, which is good for as well. We've got also got that. That's reduced the cost. So we're trying to reduce our costs at every possible juncture. Now that's reduced. Now look at that. That's reduced that significantly. So we're already seeing the benefits of. Although we spent four thousand of our money, we're going to make that back in the long run from the reduction is going to the re reduced cost of up given our armies. So that's. I wonder if we're at war with Russia at war with <laughs> a lot. A lot, and they're at war with France and Spain, uh, Hungary. <coughs> they're allies with Austria, Britain, Sweden. They're actually allies with Sweden, so we got to be careful what we do with Sweden. We can't go move against Sweden because they are allies with Russia, and we don't want Russia on our doorstep either. So if Denmark is still our main goal here, 
Right, let's end the turn. Let's see what happens. We're going to go for a number of years of stability. We're not going to be jumping into any major wars just yet. We're going to build up our forces, build up our fleets. And when we're ready, when we're our maximum potential, then we're going to pounce. And we can, we can hit hard then. And we can hit hard without having fear of repercussion from one of the major nations. Because they'll know that if they come against us, we will absolutely give them a damn fashion, sir. Believe me when I say Norway will rise to be one of the giants of Europe. They're reading those in the trade lines there pretty hard. Now Britain is struggling. They can't they can't repair Swansea. Um, they can't repair Bristol down here. I think that's Bristol down here. Yes. <coughs> which does give and they also can't repair um, Catham Docks either, which is very strange. I thought the British would be quite wealthy, but maybe they're feeling the pinch. Excuse my friends, when I have a beverage of tea. Kingdom of Spain, who are very powerful at the moment, but who have they fought here? Why is that army there in disrepair? My goodness me, they're strong. Oh, that's more like it. Look at that. Our first combat vessel. Oh, that is glorious. Look at the hull strength. Look at the firepower. That's our. This is our flagship. So I think because we've got a flagship, we need an admiral. Now, Oh, look at that. Harsh, but fair. Kind-hearted. This is the gentleman we want. Competent, plus one. Son of the sea. We definitely need these gentlemen, and he's going to be our admiral. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness me. Look at him. That is a wonderful admiral. He really is. But good Matheson. And now behind this gentleman, we have got... <coughs> The merchantman, and we'll get another merchantman as well. And then behind that, we will then is we'll get another. We actually will get some 64 guns here. 50 gunship of the line. I might, might do that as well. But I think we'll get some 64 guns here. Firepower 325. Bereit machen und now, let's keep that recruitment going with some line infantry. Twenty-two thousand eight hundred eighty-nine. That's seven seven four one. That's gone down already as well. Now, when will our? That's one more turn to metal roads. We need to we need to keep our keep our fleets going as well. We just have a. I think what we will do is we'll expend as well a good chunk of money upon our gold upon putting some more trade fleets into the s into the sea here. Oh, that's a wonderful general. It re uh, admiral, it really is. A merchantman will be sent down. Now, let's see if we can get any more research. I if we can sell improved coppering to these gentlemen here for some more money. Let's keep our money coming in as well. Try a thousand. Yes. Just got that creeping in here. Dutch of Courland. Oh, ho, ho, ho. let's see if they can sell them that payments. Six hundred and twenty. Well, yeah, we'll take that. Yep. Yeah. Take any money that's coming in here. Improve coppering. We're just going to sell them these. It's not like they can afford that. House of Savoy. Who are they? They're now they're at war with. Let's keep that. Wow, they've got nothing at all. It's not like they can afford it either. Kingdom of Prussia. I know some of you may be saying, man, I get some more, but we're going to go for a thousand. We want to be too greedy. 
No, they don't want that either. That's absolutely fine. Of Spain, what a Spain. We've got now. Sure. Oof. Now, do we want the Spanish fleet to have this? We'll go for the payments here. Let's demand fifteen hundred from Spain. Doesn't look like anybody wants our. Oh, oh, we can get carronade. Yes, we've got carronade for a direct swap. Enemies of Britain, Russian, and Kingdom of Greece. We can now build carronades. What about Russia? Let's try that. We don't want to give the. We No, they're not interested. We've got United Kingdom here. We've, wow, we've got quite a lot here. They're rich, but they're, they're suffering by the looks of it. Look at our wealth. Spectacular. That has jumped massively. Let's try and help the British out here. We don't want the British to collapse. They can't afford it. They cannot afford it. Well, I'll be damned. They can't afford it. They must be so... They must be in some serious trouble there. Wow. One more turn till that's ready there. come together quite nicely here for us. Definitely some more combat ships, so I've got a feeling that Britain might might start to look at gaze at look at that we can get carronade ships here. Medium maneuverability as well. Look at that with extremely impressive short range firepower. We might get a few of these just for that real close combat. No larger than twelve pounders. A few short sixty four pounders. Carries nothing but carronades, short guns that are half the weight of the conventional cannon. The frigate has to get in close in order to blow an enemy into smithereens. Oh wow, we might do that. We might get a few of those just to mix that in. <clears throat> Let's end the turn, my friends, and see what happens here. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Kingdom of. Oh, they can still get through. They're uh, reinforcing France. Looks like France is putting the squeeze on Britain here. Oh wow. Are they gathering for some kind of <clears throat> something special here? Possibly. Surprised that the French and Spanish haven't done anything with this port here. That could link them directly to the Mediterranean trade route. But look at the size of Spain. Spain is absolutely rampant here. Russia. Nothing silly from you, Russia, if you would. Thank you, sir. They're reading these trade routes here, which is not good for our trade. Kingdom of Spain. Wow, well, the Russians have been taught a lesson there. Spain has put its foot down. And that's good, it keeps these trade routes clear. Oh, oh! Well, what do you know? It's fallen back to the Scottish. Scotland has retaken this. Highland foot. Oh, that's they are brutal. Look, look at that, they've got nothing at all, but mind you, they've got a heck of a force there, and it's full dragoons. They've got Highland foot. They would, that would be a brutal fight. Right, we're going to send this ship here all the way down into the Mediterranean. 
or down here in the Atlantic. It's going to take a while, take a few weeks to get there. Wow, look at that force there. Why are the British just loitering around you? Look at the army they've got there. What are they doing? British Royal, Royal British Fusilier, they could absolutely just take Scotland in a heartbeat. We'll just leave this here. And now we have a real oh, 13,200 here. Look at that, protecting it from assault. And that's the metal roads are done as well. Look at this, we've absolutely upgraded everything we can here. Merchantman. I think five turns now, we don't want that. I think we're going to mix that in now with a 64 gun. 64 gun ship of the line here. Let's do that. It's going to take four turns, but still. And the fort and the roads are ready. <clears throat> I know there's not much action in terms of um, us attacking anybody, but we've got to take our time. We've got to build this up. Actually, we could probably get a general in here as well. But whom? I think we'll go for this gentleman here. Li little sergeant. going to give us additional range. <coughs> We've got him. There he is. Conrad Enkel. So now our second general is now in the field. We've got this gentleman as well. He is. Uh, look at that. What a fabulous. We might actually put him in there. This is probably our assault force. We've got 28,000 now. We've got 7232 two coming in. Our army upkeep is starting to grow. Our naval upkeep. Look at our trade though. Trade is doing wonderfully well here. We just if we had additional port here, we need to find out what's going on down here. Wow. Norwegian fusiliers. I mean, Denmark is going to be an absolute brute to read it. I mean, look at that, they've increased their naval power. I mean, it's all merchantmen, Indiamen ships. They don't have any combat vessels. If we can build up a really strong combat sh force, we might be able to pull these two forces, these two armies, away and attack Denmark. Straight off the bat, we might have to put another army together as well. We've got 26,000 here. We're going to build up a really really large bank here and they've got is that metal roads they've got as well possibly they've got metal roads as well looks like yeah they've got metal roads I'm, I'm assuming they have yes they have so when I say we were the only only country we, uh, that wasn't 100% wasn't true now they don't have I don't believe they've got anything around here no star fort here no I wonder if we invest eventually in this large star fort here That would put us almost impe impenetrable here. That's a big chunk of our money there. Now so bank build up a little bit here. Our available funds, and we are going to make sure that this merchantman is almost ready as well. That's excellent. And this gentleman will be moving down. We'll actually probably start increasing these here as well. Right, let's end the turn. <laughs> Islands retreating. They've got their own ships as well. Oh, they're hitting Britain. Britain is getting absolutely pounded here. Come on, Britain, do something. Otherwise, you're just going to get absolutely massacred. Now, France is still in command of the Mediterranean, which is good to see, along with Spain. Britain, what will Britain do? Nothing at the moment. It doesn't look like I can do anything at all. Which is a shame. <coughs> Ottomans. Kingdom of Spain. 
we're going to also wait the council said patience Mala, because there is a chance that one of the nations is going to start to collapse if that happens we can possibly pounce but we are going to probably have to decide which side of this sort of war in Europe we're going to have to take eventually we can't stand we can't stay neutral forever now let's send this gentleman Send here to Baltimore, the Baltimore Trade Post, and the gentleman will be sent all the way down to here to Calcutta for tea. Thirty-nine still, not too bad. Forty-three for sugar, sixty-four spices. <coughs> ivory there. They take on a lot of ivory there. Unless we go here to get the ivory from this here, we've got two ships here. But no, we need to free up. We need to free up this sloop as well to start moving about. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Now, now we've got our 64 gun here. So I think what we will do is we'll put another 64 gun in line to be. Got to, we've got to focus on our naval firepower here, we really do. We've got to get that fleet up and running here because we, you know, if we go toe to toe with any of the major nations, we're going to be in trouble. But if we've got a strong fleet, then that might just wore them off a little bit. So look at any research we can take. But France, what does France have that usually has technology? Nothing at all. They got diamond formation. I like it. I like that. Let's see if we can get that. Two thousand. Yes. Now we've got diamond formation as well. Spain. They don't have anything at all here, they're rich, but we don't really want to... Can we sell them anything at all? No, they're not interested in that at all, are they? Oh, Britain. What do the Britain have? Nothing either. Wow. We really do have... Uh, we've got all the technology. Scotland now are at war with Russia and with Britain, but they're now trading with Ireland. Now that's a sharp turnaround. <laughs> I wonder they're destitute, they won't have the money for it. We're not going to request an alliance. Nor are we going to request an alliance just yet with anybody. We could get a Brit one with Britain, but they look at that, their wealth, they are at they're suffering. Britain is really suffering in the pocket here. Now, if we were to take Scotland, they've got guns here, lots of guns, but we've got we'd have plenty of troops. If we were to be able to take Edinburgh here, I think we might start moving towards taking Edinburgh. Now they're trading with Ireland, but if we were to move these two armies here. That means we have to put another army into, into position here. We have to move these two armies into Edinburgh and fight them right and take Edinburgh. That would put us in a glorious position. 6697. So our income is going down here because we've got to get these trade routes up and boosted up here. Let's end the turn. We're going to try and get about 50 to 60,000 gold here. Don't you keep raiding our trade lines there, sir. Which we're going to do anyway. France really is building up quite the power here. Prussia, Russia.
speed. Excuse any noise in the background, my friends. You can imagine if someone's just woken up and has realised that I am recording. Two more turns. Ah, wind has arrived. what's in there yet and they're not recruiting either but if we were to take Edinburgh I wonder if we were to move against Edinburgh the trading partners are now the French interesting indeed sir oh that's a magnificent Look at that, 740 here for T. T's gone down to 37. What's 39? And ivory's gone up to 65. Cotton is 41. So there's sugar here. Sugar. There's T here, there's ivory here in the Cameroons. What about up here? Let's try St. Augustine. France. Nothing here at all. We'll take that for ourselves. Cotton. Cotton is at the moment 41. It's right up there, cotton. We can get that trade route as well. We'll connect all of these. So this 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 trade route here will connect into here. And then run along back of this. So look at that, 12,118 here. 15,000 as it passes through these here and connects with these. We've got 15,000. 15,000. 20,000 here because you combine these together. Wonderful. 8162. Our trade is vast here. It really is. It's a joy to see. It's going to take us a number of years to get where we want to be. Two more turns there. We're always searching for that, for those, for that technology. They've got nothing here at all. We've got, we've got, we've bought all the technology we get. Wow, we've got more technology than these. Actually, the Ottomans have got some, are pretty good at producing the, the technology. They really are. Kingdom of Prussia. Who are they at war with? Enemies of Batavian Republic, Hassel Kessel, and Kingdom of Italy. checking just to make sure we're not missing any technology because if we are we're going to buy it up Ooh, top gallants I definitely we definitely want these increases the speed in battle ships of top gallants I yes absolutely sir we want that we are prepared to pay, sir, and we are prepared to pay handsomely. Four thousand looks like. Playing difficult to get by the looks of it. And so be it. We can afford it. No. They don't want to give that away. That would be a wonderful thing to have. We're going to get that off them. By hook or by crook, we'll get that. And to finish this off here, I think we'll get some more light infantry. One, two, three, four, five, we've got six horse. We'll get one more line of infantry then. Oh, 
that's a wonderful site it really is we might even invest eventually in that star fort the large star fort 30,000 that take 10 turns 10 years wow Christiania would be a absolute brute to take it would you know you would require oh wait a minute France are up to something but what that's good if France have got more trade that means we will by default Kingdom of Prussia, Russian Empire. Ottomans, well Ottomans have taken Greece. Ottomans have taken Greece. Now the Ottomans are really are starting to fire on all cylinders here. If they hold this sort of southern redoubt down here, yeah they've taken Athens. They've got, they've retaken Athens now. They could be a very powerful ally of ours, but look at this. Austria have absolutely taken a huge swathe here. We've got any decent ministers here at all? None. Governess, plus what happened in ability. <coughs> Not really what we're after. Ah. Oh, oh, excellent. Parrot plus one to morale in battles. <coughs> He's got a parrot. My word, this gentleman is going to be an absolute wonder. One more turn, we've got the 64 gun. We've got another 64 gun after that as well. Then we go for a merchantman as well, I think. But we will need to get some carronades. Seven turns that'll take. We'll get a carronade frigate, I think, as well. We're going to have a mixture of different... Claims on behalf of the Kingdom of Norway. Cotton. 40. in the turn. Prince of Oh, look at that. Scotland's going to get some real, some large forces together. My goodness me, Britain is being absolutely pounded into the ground here. I'm not sure what France are up to. They've got the firepower of France to uh, pretty much steamroll anything in its path. Yet they've done nothing yet at all. Russian Empire. Ottoman Empire, which is growing, which is good to see. And Spain. Which is doing, I'm not sure what Spain are doing, but they've got some huge forces available to them. We've got General, another general available to ourselves. Oh, look at that, sir. Now that is nice to see, that really is. What are the admirals we've got available to ourselves? Brief soldier. Kind hearted. No, he's got no harsh but fair. Brave soldier looks good. Plus one to command in sea battles, plus one to morale. He'd be an excellent uh, second admiral to have, he really would. Now, the 64. Gun here, then we'll move to 74 gun, but before we have the merchantman here as well. Full and complete. Now let's quickly see what's going on here with Scotland. Now they're starting to put together a secondary, actually, they're pulling forces out of Edinburgh itself. Militia. Now if they move somewhere, if they move to attack Ireland, if they move to attack Ireland, we're going to move, we're going to move against S Scotland. So we, for that to that, for that, we're going to move this sloop back. Right 
Actually, we can always use our naval forces here to do that. We've got we've got ships in here which we can use. We want to keep an eye on what's going on here. We'll stay in this inlet here. They're trading with Ireland as well, and they're trade also trading with. France out of here as well, out of Glasgow. We're going to keep an eye on what's going on here. Batavian Republic. Oh, they're allies of France and Spain. My goodness, look at their en enemies. Allies of France. Are they hang on, that's your Warsaw. They don't have any allies at all here. Interesting to know. Right, let's end the turn. <clears throat> we can't do anything else. If we can get that off the Austrians. Give us top gallant, sir. 14, we've got 50,000. Yes, we've got it. Have the France, French got everything. No. Wow, our fleets will be absolutely running rampant. Edinburgh is starting to look very, very nice here. What is Scotland's diplomatic status? We could move against them, but I'll wait for the council's approval of that first. Let's end the turn. We have two more turns, my friends, or one more turn at least. Oh, no! They're moving down. Don't tell me they're going to attack Britain. They're attacking Britain. They're actually going to move down to attack Britain. We could take this chance, op this opportunity to attack them. <coughs> We can't have Scotland expanding exponentially here. Ottoman Empire. Well, something's going on here. Why is Spain why is Spain starting have attrition here? I don't believe it. The Scottish are actually going to move down and they're going to move into Britain here and attack. If they leave these behind here, we can. We're going to. Oh my goodness me! We could take this. We could take it before they do anything. I think, my friends, I'm going to end this episode here because I want the council's approval here for this. I want the council's approval for this. We're not going to go any further yet, yet in this campaign. I think sometimes it's, it's important that we stop and we don't proceed even if we could. I think it's going to be the council's approval is going to be needed for this. I don't think we can afford to do take such a risk. We've got 53,000 in the bank here. Got nearly ten thousand coming in per turn. Look at that! Our, just, our trading comes just shot up through the roof. Now, do we move against Edinburgh? They've got no allies. They've got trade partners, but as you can see here, they've moved out. They, they made the majority of their force here has been moved out. Now, if we were to attack and and attack them immediately off the bat with these two armies, which we can load into ships, it would leave Norway vulnerable. But it would guarantee us taking Edinburgh. We could then move one of our fleet ship, one of our, our our armies back into that end. I think we might leave a garrison behind. I think we're going to do that. I leave a garrison behind, in preparation. But I'm going to stop this here. I need. We need. I need the council's approval here. If you say, man, you need to move against uh, Scotland and Edinburgh now while you've got the chance. We'll take the Highlands. We can seal this down then. I think they've got nothing here, but we could we could build a fort around this instantly. We've got the money for it. We've got fifty-one thousand. 
we would then have an additional trade route, trade port from Glasgow, which would open up. We'd also have uh, the Dumfries Iron Mines. We'd have Edinburgh under our control, and it would give us access and control of the Atlantic, sort of this port of the Atlantic here. We might even be able to, but Ireland would, Ireland probably wouldn't like that. But still, they're not. They haven't got any allies. Do I have the council's permission? Do I have the council's permission here to move against Edinburgh? If so, we'll move both of these armies to guarantee us that we take Edinburgh. Because if we're going to do this, we have to guarantee we take it. We can't move one army in here and then see that army defeated on the battlefield. Um, although we could probably take it with one army, to be honest with you. We could but then again, we've got to make sure we'd, we'd have to assault them is straight off the bat. We couldn't, we couldn't risk this army coming back to defend. Um, and of course, there are going to be Scottish rebels that are going to attack because they've been able to attack and retake Edinburgh a number of times. So we've got to be careful here that we, if we take this, we hold it. And that's why we're going to put another garrison force in Christiania here to make sure that Norway can be held. That's why we've got the, s the small star fort here. Eventually, we'll put the large star fort around it as well. But we'll put at least. 10 regiments in Christiania here to guarantee that we've got something as to defend ourselves against an attack. But we're going to move, if the council if the council's permission is given, we will move and attack at Edinburgh. As the council said, patience matter. Eventually an opportunity will arise where you can move against uh, against one of our enemies. We'll try and do that now, my friends. We'll have to move our, f our two forces here, wait, and then we can move in, instantly attack straight off the sort of the beaches as it were. Because if we if we attack and they can only land and then not move any further, we're going to be the, the Scotland are going to send this army straight back to defend. But if we wait here, off the coast of Scotland in the North Sea, and then attack the following year, which means we can strike straight from the ships straight on to Edinburgh, and we can take it without this army becoming involved at all. As you can see, they would be out of reach, out of, not be able to defend. Oh, wow, my friends, decisions, 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 and then in the meantime, we can still keep our naval forces going here. We can even make this a, a full naval. Do uh, we could probably make this a naval dockyard here, if possible, um, and just continue putting out additional ships from here, alternating it. But my friends, I'm going to leave that in your capable hands. Do I have your permission to do this? If I do, then we will do that, my friends, for definite next next episode. But my friends, I'm going to end this here. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know we haven't seen any action. But because we've been, we've had stability, because we've taken our time, because we've been patient, we now have the opportunity to possibly pounce against and taking a massive city, one that could change the entire course of the campaign for Norway. It might even give us options to even p potentially s ally with Britain or even move against Britain if the time was right, if we were able to build them enough forces and get enough money in here. We might even be able to move against Britain ultimately, but we're going to at least probably leave two armies in Edinburgh to make sure we hold it. Then we'll build another army here in Christiana. We'll recruit another army here, full stack army in Christiana. Um, and that will give us the confidence we can hold Christiana. We'll also probably make this large star fort here. Um, I think we'll do that. Let's do that right now. Let's take this down to 37,000. But still, got, we've almost got 40,000. 40, We're going to have a large star fort here in Christiana. We're going to prepare for every eventuality. We're also going to take this. We're going to build a star fort around Edinburgh. We'll leave two armies here. And we'll build another army here to defend Christiania. And then we'll also build up our naval forces. And continue improving our, our trade fleet properly from Glasgow. And my friends, it could be the absolute beginning of a wonderful, wonderful renaissance here for the Norway. It really could. But I'm going to leave that in your capable hands, my friends. Do we continue this, uh, this this attack here? If not, then we shall continue as we are doing now. But I think the time might be right for us to strike. We've been patient, and that patience has probably paid off. But my friends, I'm going to leave this in your capable hands. I'd like to thank all of you for your wonderful suggestions, your wonderful um, proposals and strategies, tactics, your wonderful kind words it really does mean a lot to me does my friends honestly of course if you, if you have please keep these comments coming down below keep them coming at all all the time my friends whatever you've got in your mind whatever you want to propose whatever you suggest please let me know um, and we're going to read this this could be the springboard that we need here to really move forward in a huge way here potentially even striking down south into sort of uh, taking Britain, if we would, if we would have control of Britain, if Norway was to have control of Britain, could you imagine the power we would wield? It would be a wonder, it really would. Tactically, it would put us in a position where we would be almost unassailable in terms of what we'd have, in terms of our growth, our research, our because we have to get London. I mean, you imagine taking London here. Look at the, look at the. 
I mean, look what they've got here. Everything is fully upgraded. It would be magnificent. It really would. Taking my hometown, even. Wonderful, my friends. But I'm going to end this episode here. And as always, I leave it in your capable hands, my friends. Yes to an invasion, or no, keep it the status quo as it is at the moment. But until next time, my friends.